I'm Mike Boris, and this is Straight Talk. Uh, come on, let's go. We got through here. the three Aussie comedians known as Sushi Mango. Joe Andrew Carlo, right? Brother, brother. Ring him. <laughs> Four wogs in a room. <laughs> you to ask him not to talk over each other. Joe, Carlo and Andrew. When I was young and my father teaching me three things. Salami, prosciutto and a concrete. Would you call yourselves a, a broadcaster? Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Italian word for that? Entrepreneur. <laughs> 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 gangster. <laughs> The backyard, it's always going to be 100%. 70% the plantation and 70% the concrete. People say we're a, the new generation of it, you know. As opposed to me who invented podcasting Correct. in yeah, Australia. Yeah, exactly right. You're, you're yeah. first, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very Greek thing to say. <laughs> when I was your age, I was my age. Are you damn? What are you, damn? But do you ever get uh, worried that your dad might get offended? When I say to my dad, that's you. He goes, that's not me, that's an older man. That's what the to say. We get paid for this. No. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I can't go past this. I had Nick in here a couple of weeks ago. You all know Nick, obviously, you're in the same movie. Uh, he wouldn't shut the fuck up. I didn't get a chance to even ask him a question. I asked him one question, <laughs> and for one hour and 20 minutes, he answered it. <laughs> Is that normal for you guys? No, we, yeah, don't, we don't know that many words. We're not, we're not that intelligent, so no. But what's your experience with him, though? Like, uh, he's, he's got a lot to say. Yeah. Nick's, Nick's got a lot to say. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, he's the kind of guy who likes to, to talk and, and, and express what he has to say. But he's massively say, yeah. passionate about being a wog. Like in real in real life, like uh, what that means to him, like his mm. his background, his yep. I don't want to call it his, his cultural genetics, so to speak. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a big deal for him, right? Well, yeah, for I, you guys, I think it's the difference is is that when people grew up in Nick's uh, the the Nick Nick's age in his time in his yeah. time compared to us, by the time we came around, I guess the wrath was less. Yeah, yeah. The 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 uh, abuse. And the um um the, the word wog was used a lot worse back when Nick was growing up. Do you think it was a better understanding of in your generation, a better understanding of what you guy what what wogs were? Well a- and as a result of what Nick's what Nick had done before that, you yeah. think he actually laid down a pathway for this? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, we we didn't face anywhere near the amount of racial vilification as the previous generation, you know. So you're the smart one. Yeah, I don't know what vilification means. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, I just, I just, I just Google the morning. Someone got a dictionary. I've been yeah. waiting to use you that word. I've been waiting for my whole life. I've been waiting to use that word. But no, that's fair enough. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt. But go on, say. No, that's it. I mean, their generation, they, they obviously were, were exposed to more of that sort of thing. They were not some. We as as, as youngsters, we were. Oh no, bit, we copped it know? for sure. Uh, we, yeah. You know, you know, things have Ma- changed. Mary Custis, we we did a name drop. We did a Effie. Uh, with Mary Kustis, we did a, our second show with Nick and Effie, and we noticed Ma- Mary f- w- went through the same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not just Nick. Like in that in that time, Mary Mary is the same with the villa for villa for Croatian. Is that the word? Yeah. yeah. Croatian. Villa, 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 villa Croatian. Villa Croatian. Mm. You gotta be okay. careful. You don't villa say in Croatia. Croatia. <laughs> that can be pretty heavy. Right he's now. held on to it. You know. I think he's the thing is. I think um, over time, people deal with things differently. Um, I, I feel like he's held on to it a lot. He's held on to that, but it served him well in in, in paving a, a yeah. career. So it's it's worked for him, um, and I think that's it's, that's it, what he uses. You I know? mean, he, he did build awareness by putting the show on in the beginning, like, yeah, absolutely. like in the very beginning. And I think he's actually helped a lot of us in, t- in terms of dealing with the shit. He yeah. twisted it, the the negative of the word. Well, it's oh. like the N word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of in, in in a way, it's yeah, like yeah. you know taken back. He said that. Yeah, it's taken back and it's used as, yeah. as, as, as a form of dis. Like he said, I, I listened to the podcast, like disarming the people who were using it against him or us. So, so if you speak. guys, do you guys go about it the same way in relation to Sushi Mango or is it yours more just pure comedy, not, not using comedy to settle oh, a social issue? I, yeah, no, I, for, 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 I think I'll speak on behalf of everyone not, here. Not at all. No? No. no, no I'll speak on behalf of myself. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, no, I, it's not 
we don't have that agenda in our comedy. Our comedy is more about celebrating who we are, not uh, not there's no real message in there. So they're celebrating who we are, and being funny, making people laugh, and uh, and taking what is silly in our culture and and making people laugh, but not but make everyone laugh, not just uh, ethnics. It's comedy for everyone. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. One of the goals is to um for 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 this sector of comedy, whatever you want to call it, to not be called wog comedy or wog humor or ethnic humor. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to be called that. You know, I think it just needs to be called comedy. You know, we 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 portray uh, ethnic characters, but you know, it, it, this kind of stuff goes back all the way to the Marx Brothers. You remember Marx Brothers? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Chico and Harpo. They sort were Italian. Mm -hmm. Chico with the hat and he used to have the accent. It's like, but they were just comedians, you know? So oh, for Russian, us, Russian Jews. No, right? Russian Jews acting and they were acting as Italians. You know, so I didn't even know that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Or Marx. Marx. Or Marx. Yeah. yeah. So, I didn't know they were Russian Jews. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, well, there you go. In I'm, real I'm, life, I'm, you I'm the Italian. Well, this, okay. is a, this is a podcast about learning yes. as much as Yeah, well, I've learned something. We also got to use the word vilification, so I'm happy. Correct. But. If if you look at if you look at and I always use this uh, Kath and Kim for instance, I watched them last night. Yeah, hilarious, hilarious stuff, and they're fantastic. But um, you know, and but they are an embellishment of, of of a type a, of a type. Yeah, and that's what we are. You know, we're an embellishment of a type. But you know, I don't see why it should be called ethnic comedy or what comedy. If is 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 theirs called bogan comedy, or you know, it it should just be categorized as comedy. It's funny so. because we we you know. All of us, every, we all have a this thing in our mind. We have to put everything into a box. Yeah. You know, we have to give it a, a label. Yeah. Have to give it a label. I mean, I, I always thought of it like the opposite of what you just said. I always just thought it was like world comedy, and I would have thought Kathy Kim were bogan comedy. Yeah. Um, um, but you're really just saying it's like slapstick. It's basically just comedy. Yeah, a, a version of comedy, but taking the piss out of yourself. So, can I ask you this question? Um, do you have a, a a role model or a person? in your mind, in your family, perhaps, or someone close to you, that you're taking the piss out of when you are in character? Oh. Is there an uncle or an auntie or is it a combination of a whole lot of uncles and aunties? Yeah, it's about 15 people all rolled into one yeah. for, for me. It's just like you get a little bit of a, a bit from the uncle, a bit from the dad, a bit from the, the you know, the barber I used to go to, a bit for the, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit from everyone. So it's, uh, that's, I'd speak for you guys as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mostly, except for one character. I've only got one character that I play on stage mostly. He's, he's my dad. He's just an exaggerated version of my father. And he's about a, a, a 90, 80, 80, late, late 80s, early 90s. My dad's not that old, but that's how I play this character. And uh, he, he he says to me, when I say to him, Dad, that's you, he goes, that's not me, that's an older man. But do you ever get uh, worried that your dad might get offended? <clears throat> no, because we, we uh, with all our characters, mm. we all play them respectfully. There's a line and you don't go past the line. You've got to portray the, these, they're, they're, they're close to our hearts, so we don't, no, there's no disrespect there anyway, and I was never concerned. About he, he might get upset that he's giving away the secrets about burying the cash. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it> was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the secret spots. We love stash. the cash business, don't we? <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, I don't fucking any these days. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> credit tap, card, credit tap, card. Yeah. 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 So it, your you guys have decided this all happened around 2015 that time yeah. timeline. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the three of you had to had you get together. Oh well, well it's, oh, it's, it's you two are brothers, but like, yeah. tell me about it. Well, well we've we've been we're, we're bro me and Carl have been brothers for quite a while, <laughs> and uh, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew's been an, a family friend of ours for thirty years. You know, we, the families knew each other from because we all grew up in uh, the same area, but also uh, our parents. Well, my mum and his parents came from the same islands in Italy, so. We knew each other and we went to school together and we had a, a you know, good good friendship and so forth. So around 2015, I started doing this. I did this video in my car by complete uh, accident. Like uh, I went and visited someone in uh, in hospital, pulled over on the side of the road because – and someone didn't give me a thank you wave. You know, when I pulled over, someone drove past and didn't give me the old thanks. And I, I did a video about why the fuck this person didn't give me a thank you wave. And then I did a few more and I used to go to my brother and say – Hey, look at this video. Um, and he'd say, oh, you should try and move this here, move this there, like editing it. And we're like, oh, okay. So we'd do it and i put it out. And then I said, let's do a video doing friends in cars. So one day I went to his house and um, you can, you can, we, we put a 
camera on the car, on the dashboard. Or iPhone. iPhone, sorry, I should say, yeah. <laughs> and just drove. And that was it. And we drove, we pressed record and just stuffed around in the car for a little bit, put it out. Uh, Ange messaged us said, oh, this, this stuff's hilarious, you know. And we said, hey, why don't you cut my brother, actually, Carl? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, he messaged me and he just said, hey, this stuff's hilarious, you know, I'd love to be a part of it. And the missing part of this story is when they're three years older than, than I am and when we were young, well, they were young, they used to stuff around and mm. record on tape. You know, when you used to be able to record on a, yeah, on a, yeah. a little cassette? Yeah, yeah. And buttons. just do funny yeah. stuff. And I used to be 11 or 10 or 9, whatever it was, I can't remember. Yeah. And yeah. they used to be a little bit older and and, and I used to sit there and giggling. And, and, and um, so when he messaged me, I was like, oh, you know, I just remembered all those times when we used to stuff around. I said, come, come in and we'll just do a video together. You know, it's cool. He said, look, we'll do, we'll do one at my factory. And I just remember we went there and did it. And this is this is why I fell in love with the doing it because we just had such a laugh yeah. doing it and looking back at the stuff we recorded um, that I got addicted to it. So every Wednesday or every Thursday it became like therapy for us. We were just meeting up. We all had other jobs and businesses yeah. or whatever. We'd just catch up and we would just have the best laugh. Um, so it was yeah. just three mates yeah. being dickheads yeah. at the time. That's all it was, just having a bit of fun. And that's, and that's <clears throat> why we used to put our bloopers on our videos early on because we used to laugh so much. And have such a good time. Um, and then people start saying the bloopers were better than the videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, a, yeah. because videos are all edited and polished. They're all edited and perfect. And and I think, and you fast forward to to, to now, um, and when we did all of our shows this year and, and you know, the years before, we we stuff up in our shows and, and it's like a blooper. And, uh, and we, it's a live blooper. And people absolutely love that because they, they feel connected with you. Yeah, yeah. They feel like, oh, my God, they're normal. They're not yeah. robots, you know. Um, not No disrespect to anyone else yeah, yeah. In, in, the, in the business that does. You know, yeah, authenticity works out. Yeah. yeah like, and, yeah. you know, it's different than, I mean, we, we're just a couple of blokes that love to have a laugh and just want to make people laugh. So when we're up there and we're doing what we're doing, yes, it's in a massive scale. Yes, it's in a big place. And... Yes, we want it to be perfect, but you know, if it, if little muck ups are fun. Yeah, that's what I was, saying. I was, I was about to say that, that that's part of what makes it so enjoyable for us is that when you're up there, we're actually in order for us to have fun, we have to be real. Mm. So if someone slips up, it's just run with it and have a bit of fun. It takes with the it. pressure off you too. And yeah, it, it's a much more so enjoyable have, for us. And I think the crowd they receive that really well. You know what I mean? What are the roles? So like, um, I, I don't mean the character so much, but do you write it? Do you do you get this scripted? I mean, and we, we, show write, we write, we write all, all yeah, our, ourself. We, we direct it all ourselves. But who does that? Like Adam we, we do it sort of all of us. Mm -hmm. really. Collab. Collab. We fight. We argue. You know, uh, and when I say fight and argue, it's because we want the best result. We don't just want to settle. That that joke will work. It's like no. Well, well how can you make it better? It's not funny. Try and make it funnier. Try mm -hmm. and make it. Decent. But how, who's the audience? I mean, sorry, that, that, that's pretty subjective, though. You, do, the three of you sit down and say, like. Uh, Colour might just come up with an idea, say, here's a joke, blah, blah, blah. Do you two back, two bit, sit back and go, well, that was pretty fucking funny or shit. Yeah. I mean, so you 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 do yeah. the survey of three or two yeah. at yeah. least. If, yeah. someone, if someone really believes in something and they're like, nah, look, I really believe in this bit, please let me do it. It's like, okay, run with it. But typically it's us saying, yeah. hey, uh, you know, what no. about this or tweaking it? I'll come with an idea and they go, oh, but what about if you add this or what about if you do that? Or what about if you say this word at the end and then leave a break and then we'll split the joke up in two and, and you end up with mm. something different, you know, to what you started with. But it's typically a, that scenario. But if someone really believes in something and they think, no, I've got to have it, we're not going to stomp on it. We're going to say, it, okay. You know? it, are the jokes about the the um, the delivery or about the the content so, or the joke itself? I, it's, mean, uh, I think it's a mix of it's both. It's a combination of both. Because like, I reckon everything delivery is very, funny. Like, delivery is very yeah. important. Yeah. The setup's very important, you know, the little the little help in the middle. Because what we learned, actually, you know, we learned this from from Nick, you know, because when we were when we were doing videos before we did the shows with Nick, we were just doing our videos, you can edit it, you can make it funny, you can make it work. But then when you're doing a show, it, I'm going to rely on what Andrew replies back to me to be able to deliver my funny line. If he ad-libs something and tries to fuck it, it fucks my line. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you got to respect each other on stage as much as. Is, as is there much ad libbing going on? Like no, no, 
No, no there's sometimes. No. Like, like occasionally, you might, only when you fuck up. Occasionally, yeah. something will go yeah. wrong. But you always got to go back to get back to the script. Yeah. Get, yeah, okay. so, so, for argument's sake, if he's got a line, he screws it up, and then he ad libs, then I might ad lib in that moment. There he would, might ad lib yeah. in that moment, and then we go back to the script. And go back to the script. Well, if you find there. if there's a gap and you find something at you know, in between your stuff, like if you've got a line in, you might add something in between what you're saying. But never, never if there's a setup. If if you're setting him up for his joke, it's not like you're going to take it and say, oh, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a laugh here." Because that's squashing your, your your stage mate. You know, you, 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 that's you can't do that. What Joe said about Nick, we I don't want to. Obviously, we said he's got you know the way he is at the start. We learned an incredible amount of of Nick. He's an absolute professional, um, and taught us how to put together a proper professional stage show the right way. Would you guys agree? Mm, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. If he's a perfectionist. Like. He's a perfectionist and he dots his I's and crosses his T's and um and he really taught us stage presence and yep. how to how to really put on a show for the audience, a format, you know, um, and how to get how to get it right. Because yep. we were going down a path before he came up to us, before he came to us. Yeah, um, and we were going to do a stage show. And I think if we did that stage show, we probably wouldn't be where we are today. Um, Why? Why? Because I just think that, so in 2017, mm. we had I think it was. started to grow a bit of a following. We're like, okay, let's put together a stage show. And he came to us and, um, and he said, hey, guys, you know, I'll, I want to do something with you guys. Like just random. Well, yeah, he 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 messaged us. We so, we put him we put him in a um in a video, like we mentioned him in a video one, at one point. Greeks versus Italians, yeah, part yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. And he re he reached out to us, and Joe met with him. So in 2017, after we did a couple of videos, Nick Janopoulos sent us a message to meet up, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. And I went there with the we we thought the impression of we're going to do a video together. We're going to just shoot something, you know. And then when I sat there and we had the coffee and I've been uh, a fan of Nick's and Acropolis now and the Wog Boy for, forever. You know, I've wanted to do this forever. And um, so we're sitting talking and then he says to me, I said to him, Nick, let's, so what's this video we want to do? And he said, no, 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 I don't want to do a video. I want you guys to be in a show with me. Like we, I want to do a show with you guys. Live show. A live show. And uh, at that point, you know, I think I shat myself. Poo came out. <laughs> Vomit, poo, piss, everything. And the waitress was like, something brown is coming out of your chair. Um, and the, but, and when, but my reply to Nick was, oh, okay, yeah. Um, we could think about that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Go play the harp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the top. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, I went back and spoke to the boys. I'm like, fuck, you know, he wants to do a show with us. And and they're a bit more, you know, not as fangirly as me. And, um we're like, oh, relax. We're gonna work the shit out, and we'll see what we're gonna do. And, but it's true. Like, we the our thought process. Like, we, we didn't even think about the, a lighting guy, a, sta a sound guy, a stage manager. Like, we had no idea. Yeah. About so we would have gone. We would have gone down our path and put together what we thought is the perfect stage show, without having seen what a real stage show is or, you know, the cream of the crop stage show. Yeah. Is. Because yeah. he puts he puts on really great shows. You know, he always has. That's It's an event. His it's shows an event, are an event. You know? and, yeah. we, and, I mean, no disrespect to other people putting on shows or whatever. I think his are at a certain level and we were like, we were taught that. You know, we were taught indirectly just by watching and being around it. And we soaked that all in, and we're like, okay, this is how you, this is how you do it. This is how. It's so we travel to be, so. a sound guy with us. We travel a lighting guy with us. You know, we travel a a, a, a stage manager, a second stage manager. Like they just, so all those are much added expenses, which you, you could just go into a theater and they can provide you with one and say, copy this. But to be to be perfect. You got to have them the same crew with you all the time. Yeah, and it's you expensive know? and it's a big process. And, and props to Nick because when he proposed this the first stage show with us we'd we'd never done anything like this no. before we had regular jobs at the time i'd work at my business the carly business show was working we're all working and doing this part time and uh he sort of said well come on so he had faith in us and we'd never now our first audience was it was a, a 800 people at the Ath or 900 people at the athenaeum theater that was the first time we ever stood stood on stage and did anything and you got to give props to a guy with that many big balls, you oh, know, totally. to take on a couple yeah. of blokes, who, three blokes, four of us. But we time. are very good, so <laughs> he, he obviously and saw turned that. out that way. <laughs> but 
But yeah, I've got to give props to Nick and also, you know, I mean, no one's done more for ethnic humour. Well, you, you know, you pioneer. Than, you pioneer than, than, than Nick, you know. So yeah. Well, Nick and that crew, you know what I mean? Like they really yeah. They, you know, we, we say all the time that we, we're standing on giant shoulders. You know, we we never want to sit here and say that we 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 invented this. And yeah, we're, we're not the shit. We're just a different, you know, we're we're another cut of it. You know, or, or what people say we're a, the new generation of it. You know, we're we're not not the new, not the inventors of it. We never say that. As know? opposed to me, who invented podcasting. Correct. Yeah, yeah. exactly right. right. You're, you're yeah. the first. Oh, I heard. Very you're first. first. Yeah, very first. first. I invented it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought about it a long, long time ago. Yeah, but the yeah. mob called uh, This American Life. They took took the idea from me, but I, I but I, I kicked it off here in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Cool. that's yeah. a very Greek so thing to say. Very, you invented everything. But I'm glad you guys are doing a podcast too. Yes. Yeah. So you're copying me. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes. But the Greeks, we invented everything. But you know the Romans. Right. You know the Romans took everything Greeks did and did it slightly better, well, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you still took it. You still took it. <laughs> I want to talk to you about your podcast. So. What interests me? Why do you, why don't you do your podcast in character? Why do you do your podcast as yourselves, as your real selves? Mm. Oh, why, why don't you do it in character? Well, well we do, oh, expose it's, it's different levels to us. We're not all about uh, laughing, and, and I mean, there's that laughter is a big, big important part of what we do. And we laugh during the we we, we try and make we it as entertaining around. as but yeah, we fuck around yeah, a bit yeah. during the, during the podcast. But yeah, we have done. One in character, we're doing more roasting, but I don't know. I mean, it's just there's different, there's different levels. We chose it's to nice, do it. At. It's nice to be yourself, you know. Just some, just sometimes be yourself, you know. Just to talk to people, and I think the characters, um, they go places that we wouldn't necessarily go, and um, some of the people that we get on probably wouldn't handle it that 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 good. So we, it was, we get we get everyone on, you know, like you do. Um, I'm. I can't wait to come on. My, yeah, yeah can't am wait. I invited? Hundred yeah, percent. Absolutely, you can't That's wait. That's part yeah. of the deal when we were only here to get you on out. When you're like in you. Melbourne, <laughs> <laughs> we're booked out. <laughs> 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 no, don't worry. I'm. Over, no, I, I can't wait to come on. Come yeah, on. Yeah. But you're right, actually. Yeah. Because I think if you were in character, it might make not make me feel uncomfortable because I don't care where you go, but like. Just the characters are, for me would be a bit overwhelming because yeah. you know you're I mean, overwhelming characters. Yeah. And, yeah. and then I'd feel as though I've got to keep pace with this, or what am yeah, I supposed yeah. to? What am I supposed to be funny? Yeah, they're all supposed what? to talk. Uh, how how are you supposed to respond to? Should someone? I put on my dad's accent? Or? Yeah, yeah. But also th those characters, they what, what we find are uh, they're, they're hyper real. You know, they like they they're so exaggerated. They're hyper. They're they're uh, in, like you know belong in a little bit of a different world. So to put them in an environment where you should sit around a table and just chat, it it wouldn't feel it's not, right. It's not possible. They're they they they're the loudest people in the room. And over, like I said, would overwhelm the yeah. guest. And they roast. They they in their personalities that are roast. And indirectly, indirectly roast, roast the you. They don't want to roast the guest. You know what I mean? They're a little bit ignorant, you know, and they just they say things off the cuff, and you can't get a proper conversation. You can get some comedy out of it and be great, mm. and we probably will do. More character stuff, yeah, yeah, in the future, in that on the podcast. But we do character stuff so much on on our socials that you know, I think we, we sort of save the podcast for real combos and laughs out of character. And you know? and the, and the, is the idea of the podcast so to to um, support sushi manga? Is or is it or is it actually a, a proper individual individualized business in itself? Like sits outside of all that? No, it's just another layer. I think. Yeah. You know? I think it's I think it's a, a different entity. Like it's a Hang different. On. It's a bit of both. I think, I think it's a bit of both. Well, a bit of both. You're a bit of both. This, 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 this is a whole sushi mango. The whole sushi mango is based on he's yeah. one, he's another, and I'm in the middle. And it's just always. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah. The opinions are always like this, no, and we it, kind of make it work. It's, <laughs> well, it, it's a different uh, way, I, way I see it is it's a different layer of what sushi mango does. Like, like you know, we, we do shows, we do podcasts, we do movie, we do um uh, social media and then you know so it also it just shows that we don't just have to do character based stuff we act there's actually people underneath the characters that we that some people want to know who they are so the podcast i think allows them to do that as well your turn, Carla. Yeah, no, I, I, he's right. He's right. <laughs> I think there was a misunderstanding before and we're in alignment yeah. now. But, <laughs> no, he, look, it, it's just another <clears throat> – uh, it's a different entity of – I treat it as like it's another business within a business, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got its own – so it's got its own fan base, own following because you're asking someone to sit down mm. for an hour or two <clears throat> hours, however long. It's different to getting someone to watch short form – yeah, a minute or three minute or four minute video. So it's a different type of 
uh, fan or it's a different type of uh, fan base. So, um, and and you you know you, the way you you got to get their attention and get them to watch you. It takes a different a different level of. Um, what we do is straight we straight talk which you are now straight talks a. Straight talk, like talking to guys like you. Then I have the mentor podcast about talking to small business owners. Mm. They're different sort of different audiences, but they all sort of support each other. Like yeah, they're all. It's all part of the one group. Yeah, it, is your business uh, model is it like a, is it is it like entrepreneur? Entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> What's your telling worth? Such a entrepreneur, like gangster, uh, yeah. <laughs> drug, drug dealer. Yeah. <laughs> I love no, that. Yeah, no. No. Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I, forgot. I forgot too. Uh, yeah. For, um, what are we? Yeah. Oh, uh, where? Yeah, what's your business? Like, what's your model? Because everyone sees oh, everyone think, sees your shows and you know, sees your socials and stuff like that. But they'd be probably wondering. You know what? What the fuck are they doing this for? And like, you know, where's the money in it? I mean, what's the deal? Like, yeah. Why you do this? This is your full time stuff now. You're not yeah. running yeah, little yeah, business full-time. anymore. Yeah, mm-hmm. full time gig. Okay, so yeah. it supports you. Yeah. yeah. How do you make your dough out of it? Apart from people going to the movies and paying for a ticket and you get a percentage, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. How, how, what's the business model? Oh, it's a brand with multiple. Do you sell tentacles. advertising? Do you, sell, do you sell advertising? Do you advertise? People uh, want to advertise on your y- yeah. to your audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we've, we've done we that. Do, we do deals with. You know, brands. I can see that you got your t-shirts on. <laughs> yeah. So you got Nick's Sonia. No, 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 they, 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 they didn't pay us, so I'm going to cover that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like anyone, like you know, when you get a following, uh, I think uh, brands come to you and and say, hey, you know, do you want to do this and do you want to do that? And we do, uh, we do a bit of that. Um, we try and lock in with brands that have synergy with with what we do. You know, um, yeah, we've got we've got merch, we've got our shows, we've got movies. You got the online stuff which generates income. Um, and then you've got uh, so the podcast. The uh, podcast you know, generates, yeah, generates like. And then you've got um, with the wine, which the we've, wine, which we've. Well, because that's where I want to go. That's because that's like uh, inspired unemployed boys, right? Yep. So they're they're just fucking around. They're obviously, they've been doing a lot of television advertising for somebody else. Been lending their brand to. Well, I'm not even going to mention the name whoever they are. And uh, but. But they're obviously selling advertising because they've got a big audience. Mm. Yeah, now they've got their better beer, mm. beer yes. brand, right? Mm. We got uh, Tied to Avasa, Bam Bam. Yep. Uh, mm. He goes gets his head punched in every week, but then he sells Drink West. Yep. Mm. And he's got a few other things going on at the moment too. So where do you take your stuff? Where are you guys? Oh, look, at? you know that they, they they do what they want to do, but we've got a wine called Better Wines. It's completely different. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, uh, yeah, well it's tell same, me about no, it. It's, it's the same gonna, thing. You, you've <clears> got a fan base who buy into um you know a, a, a particular style or or feel or aesthetic of that brand and you you know you you feed that you know you you buy so with us we've always wanted to create a sub brand which is Johnny Vincent Sam's the main characters which are the three dad characters uh, which pretty much catapulted us to where we are um and the people love and enjoy um so we wanted to start a sub brand and we always thought to ourselves you know sushi mango represents being a wog brand or whatever, having that ethnic, wog, ethnic feel to it represents family, food, wine, you know, laughs. Community get together. Community. Yeah, love, yeah. community, you know, the whole lot. Authentic, we wanted to, authenticity. Yeah, yeah. We wanted to create that brand that, that represents that as well. And what are the things that are involved in that would be wine, cheeses and salamis and breads and uh, coffee and anything that's re- that, that we grew up with or that our culture – you know, represents. We wanted to create something, and um, that's what we've done with the wine. You know, that's a, the, the wine was a big part of our our culture growing up. We always had wine on the table, and uncles giving homemade wine to each other. And we wanted to um, we wanted to create that. So this is the start of the brand. So yeah, because you just yeah. mentioned some, some other things. You, you, you're pretty much talking about um, all those things you can buy a delicatessen, basically. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you know, proper yeah. Italian delicatessen. Yeah, yeah. old school. Yeah, um, you know, that's the direction, cheese, yeah. bread, blah blah blah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Biscuits, uh, not biscuits, not jets. We're not talking about jets no, here. No, no, no. We're talking about something else, you know. No, coffee. We're, talking, we're talking, talking about the biscuits. <laughs> yeah. biscuits. <laughs> the Hardman the biscuits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> that, that was that, that walking into a deli and getting that smell and mm. oh, that, like, oh my God, and seeing the prosciutto, they're hanging there and the olives and the, it gives you a certain feel. And I think that that links with our brand. A, a people lot of people think- link it to our brand. A lot of things that we do, correct me if I'm wrong, boys, is nostalgic. Yeah. You know, a lot. Whether it's my dad wears those pajamas, you your that jacket that you wear is exactly like my dad's. Or the the apron you got on, that's what my nonna used to wear. 
So making the wine for a lot of these people were when people would come up to us during our meet and greets. My dad used to make wine. My nonna used to make wine. There was always wine on the table. Wine did this. Wine did that. Wine did this. So we always try and make sure that whatever we do, this is a really good synergy between the product and where it's come from and mm-hmm. why it connects with us. So well in said. saying that, yeah. we are doing an well eyelash. Said, Thank you. Well bravo, said. bravo, bravo, bravo. That's, That's the most succinct thing he's ever said in his life, mm. by the way. But in saying well that, said. we are doing an eyelash brand for the dads <laughs> <Yeah>. next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they gave us 10 mil, we'll do it. I, 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 they gave us 10 mil to advertise tampons also. <laughs> so if I asked you to go back to when you were little kids, mm. in, you're talking about nostalgia, um, what do you remember of, at, um, you know, I, I'd be saying Greek Easter, but like, you know, Catholic Easter, Italian yeah. Easter or Christmas Well, I, I reckon they're, they're all the same, yeah. I mean, what would they, you remember though? Like what would you remember? Uh, for me it was just food, family, mayhem, you know, um, yelling, screaming. Yelling, screaming. The you smell know. of coffee from the kitchen, like that coffee going, you know? Yep. Yeah, you know, going to noise, some, like, noise grandma's confusion. house or going to an auntie's house and and everyone there and, you know, there'd be the, the uncle that rock up with the long fingernail and the stupid little moustache and, you know, and, and the men would sit. Yeah, you know, heaps of rings. It was and always brown a little and, bit. It always smell. turned a little bit brown because <laughs> <laughs> they used to dig out stuff. It's just like, oh. Yeah. Um, but fa- it was just so much. And all the kids th- really well dressed. Yes, yeah, yeah, immaculately. Yeah, yeah. And my, I, yeah. my, my dad used to used to put a part in our hair till I was like fourteen oh, years. Old. My fetta screamer. He used to hate it. He used to hate it, but I used to have to wear it till I was. Why do we all have one? We all oh, have one. What was that? What was that word? You, it's the part. A part. Screamer. He called it a screamer. I don't know why. He used to call it metta screamer. Like put a part in your hair. Yeah. For, for but, me, Christmas was. Um, I remember distinctly that the, the, you'd have lunch. And then you'd run around for a bit, and then as kids, we'd have to be quiet because all the uncles would go to sleep <laughs> and we'd just sit there for two hours. Like we weren't allowed to talk, otherwise we'd get the get get, get hit with a belt, and then up again, and then eat again, uh, and yeah. then we'd run around in mayhem, and then go home. You know, that's, that's what vomit. I remember about and vomit. Vomit. And vomit. Drank too much, he ate too much, and run around, and then yeah, vomit yeah. in the backyard, and, and go then, home. And then come on, come on, get in the car, just get home. Too much uh, Tarex lemonade. Do you remember that? Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, it was lemonade or something like because I remember as a kid too. You would drink. That's the only time I could drink that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my yeah. yaya's house, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was either a wedding or a funeral. Or a Christmas or Easter, or yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I would drink too much. I would run around, and I would get in the car. And we had a long trip home because me uh, lived in Maroubra. We lived at Punchbowl, and uh, by the time we got home, I vomited for sure. <laughs> <laughs> every time, every time. But it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Wasn't it fun? All my cousins yeah, and everybody yeah, used to be beautifully dressed. Yeah, and like, yeah. you know, you had to put your best clothes on. Absolutely. We'd go to David Jones to buy a pair of shoes, especially Absolutely. like, you know, these days we go to, um, you know, I would never think of that my own kids, but like, you know, that was a fantastic. And, and so you are you taking that richness? You were just talking about this, Joe, then a moment, but all of you can answer. But like, you taking that richness out of your younger years and you trying to parlay that into the food items or the other items that you're thinking about? Or for example, you're starting wine. Yep. Is that what you is that your uh, part that, of what your deal is? Because that's something you become become real passionate about. Yeah, I think um I think so, yeah. I think that's some a space that we want to be in. You know, Absolutely. we want to create products that are authentic and 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 just good. Well, bring good. it back bring down. It back, bring you know? it back to where you, yeah. we were. Yeah. You know, like everything. Oh, sorry, just, not go. where we were. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, keep going. I was gonna say everything we do is linked to authenticity. I said that before, um, and it's really important that whatever that we go the extra mile with everything. I'm not just spruiking. Yeah, yeah, no, pumping yeah, up, yeah. Pump up our own tires. That we put a lot of work into making sure everything we do is the real deal. Um, with our comedy, with with now with the wine, with whatever venture we 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 we're diving headfirst, and uh, it's very important that it represents authenticity from our childhood, from our culture, from other from just. It has to be right. You can't so, fool. You can't fool wogs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you <laughs> come out with a, if you come it's out with a, with a, with a, with a cheese that isn't the cheese that they ate growing up. They're gonna be like, mate, this is cheap stuff. Put it packaged. Nah, these guys are just selling, There's you know, no- selling out, or they're just, mate, they're just getting a quick buck. We'd rather make something that costs more and take a little bit less margin, as long as it meets the expectations. Of a wog. Absolutely. There's, 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 there's no harsher yeah. critic than a wog, is yeah. there? Yeah. There's no harsher critic than a wog. There, well, there's they're, no they're harsher hard. critic than your auntie. Yeah, yeah that's right. And that's you know, if right. the wogs like it, 
the skips will love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're, yeah. we're not racist though. No, yeah, but, we want everyone to buy it. Yeah, no. but it's, it's funny because when we were standing outside under those fucking plane trees dropping all that shit in my face <laughs> and we were talking about your wine, you talked about you went and tasted, you know, you just, not taste test, but you you uh, road tested all the wines yep. to make sure they got the right yep. right yeah. flavours, et cetera. And yep. You sound like you're – then you come in here and you start t- telling me about when you – Build your jokes up. You want to make sure that the you, you rotate your jokes amongst, amongst each other. Mm. So you're applying the same rigor yep. to mm. your jokes or your performance or your show as to in terms of your products. Yep. It's because when we were kids, we didn't get it right the first time. Our dads would beat us with a bit of shit. Out <laughs> That's why. <laughs> or with a shoe. Well, you know? I, I, I think it's a it's bit all, of both. It's all of that. I think it's a bit it's of everything both. You what said. You said. It's everything you, you said. Everything you said. All three of them. It's ex, it's it, if you had asked the question. Just would have been all three of the, yeah, because we are perfectionists. Well, yeah, to a, yeah to a point, but we are we do want everything to be right, and then and especially in an edit, for example, when we edit a video, we we're, we're going to do our own movie soon. And I feel really sorry for the editor of that movie <laughs> because you'd be sitting over the shoulder. Probably be sitting over yeah. the shoulder, you know, and sort of like just chop it here or shave a little bit there, because you know comedy is all in the edit when it comes to that stuff. But uh, with the wine. Yeah, it was it was what we thought, what we tasted was right, and then and then hopefully it tastes okay for everyone else. Not that not that our palate is the same as everyone else's palate, but we didn't want it to be too sophisticated. We wanted it to be a wine for everyone. It's affordable, 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 approachable, um, approachable, well priced, tasteable, yeah. not not pretentious, fakeable, unpretentious. That's important, not pretentious. Mm. Yeah, it's important because wine. When did when did it become? Pretentious wine wasn't really yeah. about Thursday being around two thirty. <laughs> wasn't about being pretentious. It was about family and um, you know togetherness and just uh, it was just it was very approachable and it became this thing that used to wine turned into this thing where it's on the shelf and it's swirled around and it's smelled and everyone's real uptight. Not where not where we came from was a little bit different. It was like mm-hmm. wine was in a tumbler. You'd have it in a tumbler glass, a wog glass, and you just drink it, and it's like you know, loud, like you said, it's like Christmas loud, and everyone was together and swapping wines, and you know. So, so we wanted to bring it back to a little bit, bring, bring it back to that. What's the name of the wine? Johnny Vincent Sam's. Uh, Johnny Vincent Sam's. Uh, vino. Yeah, yeah. It, Johnny Vincent Sam's. It's a Pinot, is it? No, Johnny, Johnny Vincent, Vincent Sam's, Sam's Vino. 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 I thought you yeah. said a Pinot. No, it's a San Giovese, so it's like a Chianti. So it's a uh, so yeah, just, like an Italian, yeah, red Italian, Italian, red, red. Italian red grape, and then we've got a Moscato with a the Moscato. Of sweet. But actual pepper. actual Italian grapes you're talking about, like not a, not yeah, fairly, Italian, but they're, 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 they're Italian. They're Italian. Uh, grown by Italians in Mildura. Right, okay. <laughs> no, I yeah. think we don't Along know. with the marijuana. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't mean that. No, 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 that's no, not no. cool. Yeah, well, you, get, you get a that's good quite feeling a when you drink our wine for some reason. No, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's serious. So it's a CBD sort of quality. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Should team up with Bam Bam. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got his CBD oil yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, he has got his yeah. CBD oil. Yeah. So yeah. How, but how's that business going, boy? How, is, is it selling? Well, we just – it's been out for about three weeks. Oh, is that all? Yeah. Wow. This is it. Fourth now. Fourth, fourth week. Fourth Number week. one, San Giovese <coughs> sold in Dan Murphy's across the country. So it's been flying out and the Moscow is doing great too. So it's it's been great. Mm. Let's go. I don't know what this movie you're going to do. Mm. Yeah. Is, can you sort of Where we just start, we went into a writing room uh, last Monday and we did, we did three or four days of a writing room with a – you know, someone who sort of helps with the with with the arc and the storyline, um, and we come out of it, and it's, it's that's the stage it's at. We haven't started writing the actual script, but the shell of the movie is is, is getting there now, and it's um, yeah. it's, really, it's really exciting. It's really exciting. Actually. It's what you said, well, what it's what you said that, before. Like? You mentioned the word community before, yeah. and it's really about that. Yeah, it's about not just uh, Greeks and Italians. It's about the whole you know, ethnic community in, in this country and they're all sort of together in and, and they've all got one we've got a common, Shut up there's now. A, Can't there's tell a common thread. Okay. <laughs> that's that's, why, that's why I'm that. trying to not say too much, but so it's just but there's different there's different nationalities in the in the movie. We're playing gonna try and play all of our characters or as many of our characters as we can in it. Um and uh it's got a nice um you know heartfelt message I think throughout it. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to to do it. It's gonna be great. Is this is like would it be like going to watch um, the old days? Um, 
Sydney Olympic versus um, <laughs> Marconi or something like that, like yeah. fucking flares. No, no, is that what you're talking about? The, the Greeks were lit all the flares, yeah, yeah. by the way. It was, no, 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 it was Marconi. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually it was, I think it was the Croatian yeah, club. Yeah, 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 yeah. They all blame each other. I think they all. I've been to some of those games. Like the flares were actually were getting thrown in Sydney anyway. They're getting thrown out in the pitch if they're losing. The losing side, you know who it was, it was always the losing side was thrown. The winning side never threw flares. Absolutely. fucking flares go everywhere. <laughs> but is it? Is, but are we, are we talking about you know light, color, movement, noise, fun, yeah. like um, and and are the are the various ethnic ethnicities, yeah, yeah. ethnicities, <laughs> whatever they are, are they bumping heads? Are they sort of? Uh, is there any not not conflict, but you know, but they sort of saying you know, like in our country, it wouldn't be it that? wouldn't be a. Accurate if there wasn't a little bit of uh, some rivalry. Yeah, yeah, friendly yeah. Rivalries, rivalries okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're not friendly talking rivalries. about. It's all about friendly rivalries. We're really pushing ourselves to jam as much complexity into this movie script as we can. We're really trying to make the, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna it's gonna be funny. It's gonna there's gonna be some heart in it. It's gonna be some well, maybe a love story in there. A little there's bit of a big a, picture of what Australia is today as yeah. well. Because you know the Greeks and the Italians came in you know fifties yeah, and sixties yeah. and. The new wave is 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 not we're we're considered Aussies now. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. We're part, well, we we're part consider of, ourselves Aussies. Yeah, we yeah, consider yeah. We're, we're <laughs> part, the rest of my wogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're part of the furniture, so yeah. to speak. You know, now there's a new wave of Indians and uh, you know uh, Vietnamese and uh, well, the Chinese Somalians came in before and, us. You know, yeah, they I mean? did, so, they did, they did. You know, so um, they, so they've got a different they've got different challenges to what the what the early waves had, the, 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 the new ethnics. Oh, the new, new wave of ethnics. The new ethnics are funny? Are they, yeah, are they oh, funny? you can't you, – I don't think you can, you can take the piss out of them unless you're of that yeah. ethnicity. Like, you know, like well, now, times have especially changed. Now. You know? We couldn't well, be doing well. an Indian. We couldn't play an Indian. Indian would have to play the Indian. Absolutely. And even then, someone will get offended at it, you know. like yeah, but, but, but are they, it is, I mean, I don't know the humour. So, but is there humour – you, you were getting exposed to it. You are getting exposed to it to me in a movie. Yeah. But is their humour funny? Like will will Greeks and Italians get the humour of an Indian or a uh, Chinese? I think or a so. Vietnamese? Yeah, but I think so because, again, I, I think we're all the same. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like their, their, their parents and their, their family values and their ways are exactly the same as yours and, our, and, and mine, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it'd be it, it's the same. We had someone from – Zimbabwe, two Zimbabwean yeah, women cool. come yeah. up to us and say, you guys are fantastic and, um, you know, it's exactly the same as my family and, you know, it's, it's – and we're just like, that's, that's, that's what we want it to be. Yeah, we might play Greeks and Italians, but it's, it's, it's really just any ethnicity that has those same values, which is many, you know. Um, so and that's why I think it resonates. It's gone past – if you break through a barrier of, going, of, of, of talking to the Greeks and the Italians – you know the people that you you identify with the most, and then it just breaks through. The levels just keep getting bigger, and then and then the Aussies start to go, "Oh, yeah, I knew a, someone who was like that," and I, yeah. I could, yeah, that's like my mate Pino from the Concrete Company. He, yeah. He's like that, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you just end up in a place that. You know, is uh, it's the same shit, different accent. Yeah, yeah, really. Oh, really. Yeah. We all grew up too. the same, it's, very it's, much. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I had a guy um, come up to me um, once. He had tattoos. A big goatee, uh, an Australian guy, bald head, and he he, uh, he just walked up to me. That didn't say a word, and he goes, uh, "When you leave the house, you shouldn't wear fucking pajamas." Because I wear pajamas as my dad character. <laughs> yeah. And I my son like, sent me photos of it, videos at all times. Yeah, <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh fuck, thanks, man." Yeah, well, I said, you know. I'll, I'll keep that in mind, you know, because I'm shitting myself right now. <laughs> and he said, well, my, my father-in-law's Italian. So you, you, anyone. It's, there's going to be someone getting You just a don't know, right? You just, anyone could come up to you and the amount of Australian people that are starting to really enjoy it, like what Carlo said, because either they've come across it or they just find it funny. Yeah, I think that's the main thing. Yeah. They're just finding. And that's been one of the goals, a link back to what we were saying. We just want it to be comedy. We don't want it to be you have to be of this ethnicity to to find this funny. We just wanted people to laugh. And you some know, things, you know. Yes, yeah, so there's some little intricacies that, you know, that that the specific ethnicity will only understand. But that's just not all we do, you know. Mm. Like they could just think, oh, these guys, they talk funny, they walk funny, they do funny faces with with their you know, poor funny faces, or you know, they're just funny. You know, that's um, 
and I think that's important. We, you look into the crowd these days mm. at our show, it's like it, it, the, but there's less wogs than there is Aussies. It's, it's, it's really incredible, actually. Yeah. There's so many different nationalities, ethnicities in, our, in the crowd when, <clears> when, we, when we play that uh, you just – I remember that uh, when, at, uh, at the Rod Laver – I'm not, not, not saying we did Rod Labour. No, well, we did. We're not saying we did Rod Labour. We killed it. We only did it three times. We did it three times. It was three. Actually, we're not going to mention that. But we're not going to mention that. Two cursed bank arenas. But we're not going to mention that as well. Two cursed bank arenas. I was going to mention it anyway. Did you say two of them? I got in the brief. I was going to mention it. Don't mention it. You said kudos bank arena twice? Yeah, don't mention it. Two kudos. No, no, we don't talk about that. But I remember after the end of the show when we turned the lights on and just looking at the crowd and going, oh, my fucking God. God, there's so many people in there and they weren't, they didn't all look like me. You know what I mean? There was Australians, there was uh, Africans, there was all national, there was every nationality you can think of and in the crowd. So and I was like, this is absolutely fucking amazing. They, they all came to see us. We must be doing something that appeals to them, you know. And there I mean? were so, so many uh, Aussies uh, in the meet and greets. Yeah, absolutely. that's only because the wogs are too tight to pay to for pay them. Because you've got to pay extra revenue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know uh, Russell Peters? No. Nah. Russell Peters, uh, some money got to get hurt a little bad. The guy from Canada, he's a, a stand-up yeah, comedian. He's a, he's a when you, 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 Canadian Indian. Canadian Indian guy and he does, um, yeah, he's arenas everywhere. He's coming to Australia soon. I'll and probably he, need, probably want to come on the show, but yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, Is he, Lee, uh, I'll just ask our production, has he reached out to us yet? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, we, yeah. Had, we, actually, we actually recorded a podcast with him the other week. Uh, you should reach out. He's, yeah, he's coming here soon. Anyway, um, he, the, the stuff he does is – in, he, Indian, but you know we related to it. We get all of it. It's the we same get thing. it. We're, we're Italians. We're like, oh, it's funny because shit, it's the same. You know, it's 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 very much the same. So, do you think you can run out of relevancy? I think you always have to reinvent yourself at some point, and we work hard on making sure our content doesn't become stale. Um, and it's challenging at times, but no, I think you can reinvent yourself. There's three of us. There's three minds here. And there's always a landscape constantly changing. So as long as you're aware of what's going out there, I mean, there was a big explosion of growth during COVID for us because we adapted to that and did our own personal stuff. And uh, no, I, I think I think that the relevancy of it's actually we it's a plight to keep eth, ethnics relevant. I think yeah, mm, that's yeah. part of what we do is to make sure we keep celebrating these characters that are on their way out. There's not many OGs left. Okay? Some of these older characters, they're kind of all getting, they're aging and they're dying off one by one. And I think it's our job, it's part of our job to make sure that they, they remain relevant. The only so, reason yeah. I ask that because if you look at like Hoag's, he had that, you know, he was the, um, his character was the Aussie, whatever you want to call it, not mm. Hogan, but whatever he was, however he's best defined. Yep. And, but it, it sort of died out a little bit over time. And it seems to me that in terms of ethnicity, um, well, you're lucky, not lucky, I mean, it is luck though, but that's that you're getting new versions of ethnicity in Australia, mm. whereas Hoag's never got a new version of Hoag's. Yeah. I mean, you and your, I guess what you're saying here is your movie is probably part of your um, e evolution, you know, like because you're sort of saying, okay, well, it's not just Italians and Greeks, but it's also blah, blah, Vietnamese yep. and maybe Russians or I don't know, yep. whatever, Lebanese, Arabs, whatever. Because is, is that your evolution? Is that how you keep, stay, you guys as a business, stay relevant as opposed to happening what, what happened with Hoag's? Uh, because, you know, I, I love Hoag's, I know him. And yeah. like, you know, it's it's a difficult thing for him to keep that whole genre going for himself. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. I think from from the way I see it, you look at characters like, you know, um, Dame Edna and these hyper real characters um, that withstood the test of time, the Laurel and Hardys that were always, you know, the, the Marx Brothers, the Three Stooges, they were um, those characters. Larry Moe and Curly. Sorry? Yeah. yeah, oh, I yeah. love them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, and, and they, it's, all these years later, are still remembered. Um, I would like that to be the same for, Sushi Mango, uh, Johnny Mitz and Sam's and, and our characters. I mean, we would strive to be um, be like the greats. I'm not saying that we are. I'm just saying that that's what we look at and we, we, we want to be remembered those characters. I want to put them in the same light as, as, those, as those characters. So I think it can be done. Yeah. I think you just stay true to yourself and stay funny. Don't take, take, take things too seriously. 
um, I think we can uh, we can do it. And also what Andrew said as well about remembering uh, a group of people that might be somewhat forgotten or not be put in history books. I think that our people, the Greeks, Taeans, all the wogs that came here uh, did a lot for the country, but they're not in the history books per se. Um, and this is sort of our way of saying, hey, we were here, we contributed to the land, don't forget us, you know, type mm. of thing. That's so, pretty noble. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and you, I guess in some respects you're sort of doing it with your product too, like uh, putting out wine, mm. and maybe cheeses or, you know, biscotti or whatever it yeah. is, you and coffee. That's sort of a way of uh, sort of dipping your hat a bit to mm. what the wogs have done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not, absolutely. Not just Italians or Greeks, by the way. All of them. No, everyone. No, everybody. everybody. Everyone. You know, Chinese food, Chinese whatever. Food, yeah. yeah. Vietnamese food, whatever. Yeah. Is, whatever is cool, you know, like uh, you know, Japanese food. For I can say, it's when you think it through, it's sort of pretty crazy how diverse Australia is. For yep. sake, like it's mad. Like you get America, mm. or go to England, it's you see a bit of Indian food, and, yeah. and the rest of it for me anyway, the greatest respect to English, boring. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, mm. you don't seem to have that diversity no. that we have here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think well, this is a nation built basically on the back of immigrants to some respect, right? Especially in the 50s and like, mm. and, uh, and uh, just after the war. I mean, my, when did your parents come in? Yeah, 56. Yeah, 50, yeah. 50, yeah. my dad was in his late 40s. Yeah. Yeah, like, same deal though, straight after World War II. Yeah. So that's cool that you are thinking of doing these things, like this movie you're talking about, like uh, celebrating well, well, we, our stuff. Well, I do a couple of hopefully our movies, you know, if, if the first one does well and – and and a, and a you know a couple of Netflix or not Netflix but shows you know and just keep growing. But I also think that we can also do things outside of the characters. That's the podcast shows that that as well. You know that's another side of us that we can do stuff outside of the characters if we ever need to and and grow that way. I mean, I think in COVID, what happened in COVID with us doing the videos that we did and people come up to us. Or just, down, a, just downstairs. Down, you know, on yeah, a daily. I saw, I saw, yeah. I saw, I saw Roberto. Roberto. Yeah, he just came yeah. out to say thank you for you, you know, what you did for us during COVID. Oh, you said that to you, did he? Yeah. yeah. He's a coffee shop owner, right? Yeah. He's Chilean. Yeah. Chilean. He, yeah. He's, he, you know, he runs a coffee shop in this building. So, but yeah. you know, we were doing just normal video or videos as ourselves, just taking the piss out of this situation that, that everyone was thinking. Um, so what that did was it just showed that there was a face behind the mask that – Oh, they're actually funny without the mask as well. And it allowed people to go, okay, well, no, they're not just taking the piss out of their parents or out of their families. They're, they're comedians. And when I lo- when we interviewed the Prime Minister at the time, Scott Scott Morrison, or Scott Lamington, as as we called Scotch. him. Scotch. Scotch Lamington. <laughs> Scotch Lamington. So um we he he uh I thought we we're gonna get heaps of backlash. Because oh this is racist and what you got you know you got stereotype this at the other but it was after the whole COVID thing so I think people started to realize okay these guys are comedian they're not just taking the piss they actually do this you know and it, and it became accepted it, it's weird you know because years and years and years ago we did something on Optus Sports for the World Cup and the last World Cup and we went on without no there was no reel there was no hype reel there was nothing we just went on stage as the dads and we got all this negative. Mm. And Bubba goes, this is racist. This is so it was like so people just thought we went on there, just take just a couple of guys dressed as wogs, taking the piss, not realising there's a whole backstory to it, you know. And I think years later it's finally come around and people are finally starting to understand. We loosen up a bit. Yeah. I don't think you're ever going to stop that though. I mean, in today's day and age, like every, it's, there's so much – Offense, offended, so many offended people. Yeah, totally. You're never gonna, you know, and you're never gonna get everyone, and not everyone's gonna find you funny. And someone's right. gonna get offended, but the job as a comedian is to block that out. That's the and if you're not, if it's not malicious, you know, to the core, you block it out and you go forward. Like Dave it's, Chappelle, yeah, man, his last yeah. monologue he did, you know, the Saturday Night Live yeah, one. I've He's come it. under fire. I'm like. Well, that's probably one of the most genius bits of was, comedy I've, was, I've, I've seen in a long time. Uh, that guy's so, amazing. It's so good, you know. I thought I thought it was just amazing. And, but, you know, 
that's that's what I think that's when you know you, you, you're doing doing good. If some people get offended, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, you know, it's, that, it's yeah. comedy subjective. I mean, it, it, what I find funny, you won't find. You perhaps yeah, won't yeah. find funny, and he won't find funny. So you find your audience, and then the others, if you don't like it, fuck well, off. Find your own fucking that's audience. That's right. Yeah, I mean, that's right. right. That's what it is. That's what it is. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know <I'm> <laughs> that's right. Like, well, I, like yeah. I'm like yeah. I'm not here to please you. Me to please the people want to be pleased. Yeah. yeah. Like, what can I do? Like, I can't be funny to everybody. I mean, in your case, or I can't. In my business, I can't be relevant to everybody. Like a lot of people don't like my shit, so don't don't listen. That's it. The I way mean, I people see it sometimes you know? is if yeah. people don't like Dave Chappelle or Jerry Seinfeld or Kevin Hart, who are the the biggest comedians in the world, and people don't like them, well, you know, they're, they're not going to yeah. like us. Well, there's, some people, you know what I mean? Like, it's just yeah. everyone's got their taste. Yeah, and and, and, and t- just turn it off. You don't have to keep watching. But that's no. the problem. People today, uh, what, if they don't like some people, I won't say. Yeah, Some people, exactly. if they don't like it, they want it stopped. But what it's if- like the, you stop saying those jokes because I because I have the ability to listen to it. It's like you stop listening to it, yeah, t- and that's it. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Just, so why why the fuck would anyone continue to listen to things that piss them off? Yeah. Tune out, move on. There's a little thing called YouTube now. Yeah. Scroll, you'll find something else to make you laugh or something yeah. else to keep you interested. Just. Piss off. Don't watch it. I mean, what, things that upset me, I don't watch. The, the craft has to be protected. Comedy as a craft, it has to be protected. It has to be, you know, it's 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 something that really helps people's mental state, helps people's, you know, life. Uh, it needs to be protected. There's people that rely on comedians to get them through serious mental issues. I'm not saying that, you know, we're brain surgeons or whatever, but, you know, it, it just the craft just needs to be protected from these people trying to cancel what people are trying to say because the more that happens, the less laughs there will be and the less it can help people. You know? but, is, but isn't isn't part of being Australian taking the piss out of yourself? Yeah, totally. 100%. I mean, so why the hell Bagging aren't we each other. doing more of this? Why aren't we taking the piss out of each other and celebrating who we are through? Mockery and, 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 and it's more highlighting a, something silly that you that people do, that cultures do. We all do silly things. Well, not just cultures. It could, just be, it could be anything. Well, whatever, really. you know, whatever it is. Why aren't we, why aren't we, sell, why aren't we encouraging more on this? Because it's, when we laugh together, there's no racial stuff, right? If a Greek and Italian and Croatian and African are all laughing, at that moment there's no, there's no, they're not at each other. They're all laughing together, right? Yeah, yeah totally. So why aren't yeah. we all laughing together and we have to with something. each other, not at each other and just having a good time? I think there's just a lot of people who take life really seriously, and all of a sudden they want to take to the the keyboard mm. and have a crack. Have you have you had any experience with having guests um, guests on that people don't like as much, and then throw shade at you for having them on? Yeah. Well, so yeah. have we. I got people threatening me because I'm, then you're going to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm going to wind up because I know you guys got to shit. Yeah, back to three I, followers I, after this one. <laughs> I want to make one confession to you. That, like, I mean, I love, I actually love your comedy, my, particularly my two of my elder sons. I have four sons, and uh, and one in particular is always sending me stuff with skits of you guys yeah. as dads. Like, yeah. And uh, obviously, he's making reference to me. <laughs> um, and when and uh, and uh, when my grandson was born. We have a, a WhatsApp page, four of us, the five of us, including me, and uh, we talk about, you know, what's grandson going to call you, Dad? Like, what do you want to be called? And I said, oh, mate, I don't want to be called Grandpa. Oh, this is before he's born. I'm going to be called Mark or something like that. You know, just give him my name. And one of my boys, when, when my boys were growing up, I always said to them, no. No matter what they ask me, I say, no, <laughs> as in Orky. You yeah, yeah, Orky, for yeah. no, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Orky, no. And because uh, my father always said to me, no. Yeah. And I just used to do it for fun and all that, but I, I end up giving in all the time. But, but I would always say, oh, okay, okay, no, 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 no. So one of my sons wrote on there, well, why don't we just put, uh, tell grandson when he's born, dad, uh, grandpa's name is. Orky, O C C Y, and I thought that was someone was taking piss out of his model. So I thought he's taking the piss out of me. That's hilarious because I used to always say no, and I wrote what because I always said no, and he wrote back. So that stands for old cranky cunt <laughs> <laughs> with a Y. You know, because that was his put Y in the end of everything. Old cranky cunt. So anyway, like he, he wrote O C C Y. But anyway, I don't know if we're allowed to put that up, but but that's what he said. <laughs> old cranky cunt. Guys, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. That was awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Uh, thank you so much for having us, man. We've been a fan for a long, long time and love what you do. Thanks, Joe. Honestly. Thank you. Saw it's your message. So nice. And, uh, and got very, very excited. And official invitation to please come to Melbourne, come on our podcast. I'm on. 
Let's Absolutely. do it. I'd love to have you on. I'm Let's doing do it. it. I'm doing it. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks guys. Appreciate Thank you it. so much. Thank you.